Welcome to our first episode from Chapter 12a, which will be on DNA structure. Now, in our previous series in Chapter 2, we did talk about the structure of nucleotides. And we're going to revisit that information here in this chapter. But we're also going to focus mainly on the double helix structure of the DNA. And we're also going to look at how it was discovered. And if you remember from Chapter 1, we were talking about the One group of scientists will read the, the experimental work of another group, and that can inspire them on how they want to do their own experiments. That's exactly what happened here in the study of DNA. So first off is a gentleman named Frederick Griffith. Frederick Griffith did his work in the 1920s, and he was actually studying bacteria that caused pneumonia. Pneumonia is a disease where you get a bacterial infection in your lungs. They will fill up with fluid. You will not be getting enough oxygen, and it potentially can be fatal. So back here, even in the dawn, uh, this is probably just a little bit before antibiotics were available, uh, pneumonia was a very important killer in, in the human society. Not so much today, unless you're older or really young, because we can take care of the antibiotics. But back then, it was a very, very deadly and somewhat common disease. Well, as he was studying this bacteria, he came across a process that was called transformation. And in this process, one strain, and strain means kind, one kind of bacteria is permanently changed by taking in the genes from a different strain. Okay, I want to take the amount of, I want to take this moment right here, and I want to explain to you what a gene is. A gene is a segment of DNA that will code for a protein. So one of these ways that you want to remember this is one gene equals one protein. So a gene is a segment of DNA that has the directions for producing a particular protein. So what happens during transformation is we have one type of bacteria here. It's, it's dead and it's broken open. And we have another bacterium who's alive and it is absorbing the DNA from that dead bacterium. And it's gonna make that part of its own genome. Now the word genome, let me write that up here. Genome is basically all of an organism's DNA. And let me put a apostrophe on this S. So this is all the DNA that you have. That's your genome. All right. Let's brush that away. Explain this a little bit better in a picture. All right. This picture demonstrates Griffith's experiment and is clear and as easy as I can show it to you. All right. So what we have here is the bacteria came in two strains. The first strain was the rough strain. That R is for rough. The rough strain kind of has rough edges in here, so that's how he got its name. The colonies that it was made on here would have just, you know, kind of jig-jaggy edges. The other strain was the S strain, and the S stands for smooth. It has a smooth kind of jelly capsule around it, okay? Now, what would happen is the rough strain, your immune system could attack it and kill it, and you would survive if you had that rough strain and pneumonia in it. Uh, the S strain, it's got this jelly coat around it. It's called a capsule. Uh, and this capsule would make it very difficult for your immune system to grab onto it. So this bacteria could not be destroyed, and then this was the one that would give you pneumonia and you would die. All right? So the R, the rough survives, your immune system can break it down. The smooth strain, your immune system cannot attack it, and you would perish. All right? So... This would be the control group, and this would also be a control group. He's going to use these for comparison. All right, so now over here to the experimental groups. The first thing that he would do is he would take the smooth strain, and he would boil it, and he would kill the bacteria. And so he would stick these dead bacteria into Mr. Mouse. Voila, the mouse did not get pneumonia, and it survived. Okay, so what he did next was he took the heat-killed S strain, and he mixed it with a live R strain. Now, if you look over here on your control, a live R strain will not kill you. If you look over here in treatment number three, the heat killed S strain will not kill you. So these two by themselves should not kill you. The mouse died. And so what he did is he took some blood or some, some fluid from the lung tissue of the dead mouse and he found a live S strain bacteria. So what he found here was that 
some of the rough strain had changed into the S strain. Okay, so I want to write this guy down here for you. Okay, the R strain, and, and this is exactly what Griffith said, the R strain was transformed into S strain. He had no idea how this happened. He just knew that it happened. He knew that somehow something from inside here got into this guy. And once again, he was not studying DNA, so he had no idea that this occurred. Okay? Other scientists are going to read his work, and they're going to try to discover what from here got into there. All right, the next guy that did this was a guy named Oswald Avery. And he did his work in the 1940s. So think about World War II time, all right? His goal was to determine what molecule was used during transformation. So he had read Griffith's work, and he's trying to discover what's going on. Now, he knew that there were four biomolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And he's pretty sure it's going to be one of those four. So he does a process of elimination. He figures out that it's not carbohydrates and it's not lipids. And he really didn't think it was going to be them anyway. He figured it was either going to be proteins or nucleic acids. And so here's how he did that. Okay? He had a protease. Remember, all enzymes end with an ASE. So he took a protease enzyme, an enzyme that breaks down proteins, put it in there, basically it broke down all the proteins that did not change the bacteria. Okay? Uh, ribonuclease. This is actually for RNA, one of DNA's cousins. And he found out that if I broke down all the RNA inside these bacterium, you still got pneumonia. So in other words, transformation still occurred. So that had no effect. Okay, then he used an enzyme called deoxyribonuclease. This is an enzyme that's going to break down DNA. And he found out that if I broke down the DNA in the heat-killed S strain, then transformation did not occur. Mm -hmm. So we have the first evidence that DNA is the transforming factor. And that was done by this guy, Mr. Avery. All right, we have another group of scientists. And these are uh, uh, basically a man and woman team, which are pretty rare back in the 1950s. Okay, Alfred Hershey and Mar Martha Chase. And they did an experiment where they're gonna use viruses to help prove the work of both Griffith and Avery. Now, one thing we want to know about viruses, they're only made of two things. Number one is a protein coat. Anyway, they have an outside that's made of a protein. So think of like a hollow or a tennis ball, you know the hollow, the rubber and furry part of a tennis ball, that's made out of protein. And then on the inside, you're going to have a nucleic acid core, and it's either going to be DNA or RNA. DNA is much more common than the RNA types, but you can still have those. Okay, so what we have over here on this picture, this is a picture of what is known as a T4 bacteriophage. Bacterio is a word that refers to bacteria. Now, this is actually a one word, so I'm going to have to put, put a dash here. And then the word phage means to eat. So this is a virus that infects bacteria. So we'll say this one is, uh, we'll just say a, bacteria virus. Okay. You put the words together, it means bacteria eater. So this is a virus that's going to infect bacteria. And as you can see here, everything that's in this little bit of purple, that's the protein coat. And then on the inside, you have a DNA core. I'm going to write DNA here a little bigger. All right. So that's the two parts of this. So in here would be the bacterium. And so as you can see here, this virus is injecting its DNA into the bacteria. All right. Now, in step one of their experiment, they tag. Now, what we mean by the word tag is they use okay, a radioactive isotope. Oops, let me spell that right away. Okay, now, what would they do with this radioactive isotope is that it would glow. So when you tag a chemical, you can see it move because you can see it glowing. So they're going to be able to tell if this biomolecule got in or if it got out. And the idea is whichever one, the protein or the DNA, if they moved in, 
then you'll find out if that's what's the transforming factor. All right, I'm gonna wipe this away. I think I'm gonna need this more space. There we go. All right, in part number two, they tag the DNA because they wanted to see if the DNA would get in there. So they used a radioactive form of phosphorus and they found out that it was the glowing part moved into the bacterium. And so that basically told us that the DNA was the transforming factor. It was not, in fact, protein. All right, so here's a picture that'll explain that a little better. All right, as you can see here, they used the T2 bacteriophage, same different, you know, just a different flavor. And here it was the protein coat. See, it's red right there. And the red glowing stuff did not move in. So it cannot be protein that does it. Here, the glowing part is the DNA. And this DNA moves in, and voila, there it is. Okay, so make sure that you study this picture because it really explains the previous slide a lot better than what I had. Okay, all right, that is going to end this screencast. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask your teacher. Um, and if you're in my classes, don't hesitate to ask me. I'll take care of you. All right, two more episodes to go in this series. We'll catch you next time.